Welcome back, guys, to Trails to Azure. Well, last episode, our Chapter 4 Day 2 Patrol took us through the downtown district and into East Street, where we entered a Bracer Guild reeling from Arios becoming Crosbell's defense secretary, asking Mikkel about the Divine Blade of Wind's movements that built some suspicion. After a call from Lecter Arundel to meet with him in Crimson and Co.'s old HQ, which led to a point of no return, a question to the audience has now allowed us to locate the missing reporter, Nilsson. Here we go. This is why we've been hounding you down, sir. Mr. Nielsen? Ah, is that you, Lloyd? This grave belongs to Lloyd's older brother. You were here to visit him, weren't you? That's right. There was something I wanted to speak with Guy about. You wanted to talk to my brother? Yes, I wish to tell him about the raid, the Declaration of Independence, and President Croix's speech. The people of Crosbell are all facing in a singular direction, irrespective of their own personal emotions. It is for that reason that I am opting to go against the grain and ponder the darkness of the past instead. Darkness of the past? Do you mean... Yes, I do. I'm referring to the murder of your older brother, Detective Guy Bannings. I beg your pardon? Guy's death? Where is this coming from? And why now? Why are you saying there has never been a more perfect time? What exactly is it that you know, Mr. Nilsson? Hmm. Lloyd, special support section. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like for us to head elsewhere so we can review that case together. How does that sound? Sure. Alright, if you're willing to, then so are we. Thank you for your cooperation. Just so happens that I have the perfect place in mind. Let's make our way back to the city. Quest Inside Scoop Guy Bannings has started. Out of curiosity, Mr. Nielsen, why come to Grant specifically? Three years ago, Guy and I agreed to meet here for another one of our friendly exchanges of information. It was shortly before that meeting when I learned of his death. Oh, that explains it. The secret behind the cult incident, the arrest of Imperial and Republican faction diet members, the election of a new mayor, the inaugural meeting of the West Samaria Trade Conference, the raid on Crosbell City, and now the declaration of Crosbell and Independence. While each of these events may appear isolated on the surface, in truth they are closely intertwined. In other words, they are all pieces of a much larger puzzle. A larger puzzle? Really? Yes, we're one to unpack the bigger picture behind them, the rest of the pieces would surely fall into place. Doing so should shed new light on the murder of Guy Bannings. That is why I propose this case review. I understand, however, if you'd rather spare yourself the heartache, Lloyd. Nope. I'm alright, and as a player, I've been waiting for this for a very long time. It was the, uh, one of the standout, not resolved plot threads of the original game. Of course, not all plot threads are to be resolved in a long-running series. But here we go. Lloyd, are you certain of that? Don't forget, time ain't exactly on our side today. We should get this show on the road. That's perfectly fine with me. Let us begin, then. First and foremost, we should examine the conditions under which Guy's body was discovered. It was a rainy day, three years ago, at Orcus Tower's construction site. Time of death was estimated to be just past dawn, although the body was not discovered until later that night. As for the cause of death, it was hemorrhagic shock. A bullet from an orbital gun pierced him from behind, straight through the heart. Does all of that sound correct? Yes, that's right. He was shot in the back. Damn, what the hell? Now let us reconstruct the scene of the crime at the time his body was found. To begin, there were signs of fierce struggle throughout the area. However, the only physical evidence left behind was Guy's body itself. Not only was his favourite pair of tomfers absent from the Locus Delecti, oh, I haven't heard that term before, the CPD badge that he so proudly wore on his chest was missing as well. We found that. I have come to understand that this badge was recently recovered. Is it true that it was taken by a member of the organized crime syndicate known as Ravash? Yes, we found it in Marconi's office, and he later confirmed it. The mafioso in question even confessed to lifting the badge off of his body after the cult incident was resolved. Oh, I see. However, that was, as you said, after the fact as far as eyewitnesses go. There were none. At the time, construction work had been suspended, and no staff were present at the site. The time of day and environmental factors were also unfavorable. It was the break of dawn in the midst of a blustery thunderstorm. 
Because of that, there was no reason for anyone to approach the scene, much less witness the actual murder. To make matters worse, Gaia never informed anyone of where he was heading prior to the incident. And that is where my trial goes cold. What you just heard is the entirety of what I've managed to gather these past three years. That is, unless you have anything to add, Lloyd. No, I don't think so. You covered everything I knew too. Mr. Nielsen's penchant for gathering information never ceases to amaze. Yes, though in this case it would seem Guy was not just a source twin, but a dear friend as well. That may explain why he has such a vested interest in a cold case like this. Very well, why don't we move on to the case review then? If we're to unravel this mystery, we must first carefully consider our potential culprits. The obvious place to start would be to go over the most likely suspects, namely Ravash and the DG Colt. Yeah, but... no. Do you believe that either of them might be the perpetrator, Lloyd? Now, if I remember correctly... I'll let the next dialogue, there's no next. Could Guy have been killed by someone from the Mafia or DG Colt? Uh, I'll scroll down here just in case I accidentally press the button. If I remember correctly... Ravash were hired to kill him, but they didn't do it. They did recover the thing and kind of like claimed it, but didn't... Evil Gunther. <laughs> I'll just call him Evil because I always say his first name wrong. Didn't he say that they? he knew that they didn't do it? And he didn't do it. Kind of thing. And he was the DG cult. Basically. I'm pretty sure that was said. But it's been a few months, do you know what I mean? No, it couldn't have been either of them. As far as the Mafia goes, Mark only denied that he and his men were responsible. Of course, his word only means so much on its own. But Joachim told us that although he arranged for Ravash to kill my brother, they failed. Garcia Rossi admitted it to him when Marconi tried to take credit. Okay. There's also no evidence that any of their subordinates went behind their backs to carry out a hit. Not only that, but Guy was also already investigating both the Mafia and Joachim. His defenses were up. He would have never put himself in a position where either of them could make an attempt on his life. I just can't fathom that being the case. Gotta agree, chances are slim. Everything we've come to learn about the dude says he wasn't just ballsy, he was a damn good detective too. That he was. I could never believe for a second that he died fighting the Mafia or the cult. I feel just the same way myself. The elements of this case would appear to point elsewhere. I truly think he could have died fighting both, to be honest. He was just good, probably not good, he was probably good at putting himself in positions that he wasn't getting killed by them. But I'm pretty sure if they really, 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 really wanted him death and really tried, they could have done it. I felt just the same way myself. The elements of this case would appear to point elsewhere. The theory may have held water prior to the cult incident, but at this point we can safely rule out both Ravash and the cult. So let's move down the list. Could he be assassinated on behalf of one of the two major powers? Really? <laughs> By a diet member from the Imperial or Republican faction, say, or one of the government officials they align with, or perhaps a foreign intelligence officer? See, the first lines are just, that's no. Maybe a foreign intelligence, a foreign, a foreign intelligence officer could have. Do you think it possible that Guy's killer might fit into any of those categories? Was Guy killed by someone with ties to the Imperial Republican governments? It's highly likely, it's not very likely, it's impossible to say. I mean, there's been absolutely nothing in the game so far to remotely suggest that that might be a thing. Like, nothing, right? And... I don't know if... Uh, the intelligence officers are A, that open to shooting people? That would kind of blow cover a little bit, though, to be honest, no cover was blown because we don't know who actually murdered him. I would err on the side of no, which would be, it's not very likely, I'm sure. On the, the basis of they've got bigger fish to fry than Guy Bannings. And Guy Bannings wasn't investigating them. Guy Bannings wasn't doing anything involving them. Why would they target Guy? 
I don't see a reason. But who's to know what intelligence agencies do? <laughs> yeah, he accidentally shot himself in the back. <laughs> he fell on his gun backwards while pulling the trigger with a broken arm backwards. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, essentially the way that he died is kind of telling of certain scenarios, right? No, I think that's pretty unlikely. It's true there have always been corrupt officials within Crosbell with ties to the two major powers. And it's also true that my brother was quick to push against the injustices they committed. Plus, we can now say for certain that spies from both countries were making frequent visits to Crosbell around that time. But as much as I believed in my brother, he was in no real position to touch them. They couldn't have viewed him as a serious threat. Yeah, they get fish to fries. Unfortunately, you're probably right. As much as I hate to admit it, either nation could apply tremendous pressure on the CBD through the state government if they really wanted to. Especially under the old administration when Guy was alive, it would have been far too easy. Yeah, it just doesn't fit. Why go to the effort of luring out and killing one single detective when bureaucratic red tape is effective enough as is? A high-risk, low-reward maneuver like that just wouldn't have been worth it, no matter how much of a fawn on their side he was. Hmm. Let's say, and I'm just talking hypotheticals here, that Lloyd's bro was in contact with one of those guys. He still wouldn't walk into an obvious trap. It's the same deal as the Mafia. I concur. Impressively deduced, I have nothing more to say on the subject. With that, let's move on to our final possibilities. Out of a sizable pool of potential suspects, you've eliminated every one of them so far. Yeah, to be honest, that's quite a large amount of people. <laughs> Tell me then, who else do you suppose could fit the profile of Guy's killer? Someone from Ouroboros? Someone from the CPD? Or a personal acquaintance? All of these are super duper possible. <laughs> so how do I narrow down between the three? <laughs> if I were to narrow down from the three, I would basically say Ouroboros don't really do that. <laughs> the weird thing about them is their body count. They're not really about the body count. <laughs> They're about proving they're powerful, kind of having a little bit of a scuffle form you, then cutscene stuff happens, and then you go, well, I'll get you next time, Gadget, or something. They don't really go, except Walter, yeah, Walter was a bit. <laughs> yeah, Walter was a bit OGT. Man, did he punt the stell in that anime. But still, it's not really their modus operandi. <laughs> and to be honest, they probably just would they have left a body? <laughs> That's actually another question. Would they have left a body? <laughs> they are in more of a capable way of not leaving any evidence whatsoever as well. <laughs> I don't believe it on Ouroboros, just, just due to all my encounters of Ouroboros. Someone from the CPD is possible. The weird thing is that someone from the CPD and a personal acquaintance actually has overlap because it's basically the same thing. It's a colleague is a personal acquaintance too. Do you know what I mean? But the thing is, what's gone on here is that he's been shot in the back and to, for a guy like him, who was a top detective, to have not noticed someone coming at him from behind there must have been something drawing his attention or at the front. So it's more than a one-man job. You could instantly tell. Or he was like chloroformed or something and then shot in the back. I don't know. So if I narrow it down to a 50-50, it's one of these two. It's a two-man job. But I know what I'm going for. Faint is one hell of a stairs. All that ace right is starting to pay off. Essentially, if you're to look at the police and what guy was supposedly like hanging around with and managing to deal with, and I I dare to say it because it just kind of blows the cards. It doesn't sound that there were many people that could hang.
So you've got someone distracting him from the front that can hang, and then someone else shooting him in the back. So I would have, uh, I guess you could say knowledge. I was still wary of them, no doubt, but it had to have been someone he knew well. That's the only answer that fits. Someone he wanted to talk to. Something, someone he'd completely drop his guard around. Huh? You serious? And what brings you to that conclusion? Well, first of all, Guy never revealed to anyone where he was going beforehand. That leads me to believe that he was confident in his ability to handle the situation alone. The only reason he could feel that way is if he were meeting someone he knew personally. But that's true. Whether Guy was asked to go there or whether the meeting was his idea is impossible to say. But consider where they met, an empty construction site. Clearly whatever they planned to discuss was important. They didn't want anybody to hear what they were talking about. It's possible the conversation went sideways, that it broke down to the point of no return. Maybe that's why the killer took his life. And what conversation would that be? Honestly, I don't have the slightest clue. But whatever it was, it cost him his life, and that means it was grave enough to silence him over. But I don't use these words lightly, but it might have been linked to a deep conspiracy of some kind. A conspiracy? Uh. When we began this review, you said that unpacking the bigger picture could shed new light on the case. At that moment, I felt like something clicked, way in the back of my mind. Did you now? I can't get past the idea that my brother was closing in on some kind of secret plot. A plot concocted by somebody connected to the DG cult, the Mafia, the Empire, and the Republic, yet also separate from them. Whoever it was, they couldn't allow Guy to interfere. Chances are, that conspiracy is still alive and well to this day. Doesn't that sound like the most logical explanation? Connected, yes, but also separate. And you say this conspiracy is still ongoing? It's hard to draw any other conclusion. The killer is still at large, after all. That fact alone is enough to tell me that whatever they killed Guy over is a long ways from settled. Mr. Nielsen? Sorry, was that too far-fetched? No, not at all. I think your reasoning is perfectly sound. Let me ask you this, Lloyd. As we, were as we were reviewing this case, did any particular suspect come to mind? One who could in theory have called Guy out to that construction site and murdered him three years ago. Why are you fixated on one person? No, unfortunately not. To his credit, Guy was popular. Even if we narrow it down to those he knew personally, there's still a lot of people. There are also two other key details. His back was turned when it happened and his tomfers were removed from the scene afterwards. I suspect that both of those facts are vital to figuring out what really happened that day. Okay, Lloyd's on it. And again, if that evidence alone was enough to identify the killer, the First Division would have solved this case three years ago. That's a fair assessment. Unfortunately, not every clue has been revealed, and so the culprit cannot yet be identified. However, I do think one thing has made itself very clear. The only person who can uncover those final missing pieces and solve this puzzle is you, Lloyd. Mr. Nielsen. Right. And I intend to do just that. Huh, glad to hear it. It's strange, I suddenly feel as though I've made good on my promise to share intel with Guy here three years ago. I owe you all my deepest gratitude for indulging me with this review session. Not at all. If anything, we should be the ones thanking you for this. You're too kind. Now to excuse me, I greatly anticipate hearing about your future exploits, SSS. <laughs> the lady at the bar go, what am I listening to? I get the sense that Mr. Nielsen was hoping to help us more than the other way around. He might be on to something, Tio. Keeping his promise to my brother may have been his real goal. Glad we took the time to speak with him. <laughs> I can't help but agree. You said it. Oh, come on. Let's get cracking. All that hashing out's got me fired up. Yeah, next stop, the Don's room in the old Ravash building. It's time to see what information we can drag out of Lecter. Inside scoop guy bannings is completed. No, they didn't listen in, surely. Can I find him again now? I'm going to go back and see and to Crossbow News Service, maybe. But yeah, essentially, we're told more, of course, by what's going on. It's reiterated by Lloyd at the very end. What are the possible reasons for them to remove the evidence of... You know, I basically put the cat out of the bag there. The evidence of a uh, guy's weapon versus removing guy's 
body. You get me? It's because the weapons are... Very telling evidence. Oh, we didn't go back. We didn't get a scene here for talking about it. Someone's got new dialogue. And the evidence- and that such thing says that there was a fight. And if there was a fight, there is no way that the guy is turning his back on his opponent <laughs> to get shot in the back, which would suggest there's two people. That should be correct, right? Theorizing-wise. That's what you can extrapolate. Where's he gone now? <laughs> Where the hell has Nielsen gone? All right, looks like Nielsen's not in town again. Again. Second hidden quest. <laughs> Well, it's time for second breakfast. Maybe he's actually in the cathedral or something. Where could he have gone? He's gone to bed, let him rest. No idea where he went. I take it that means I can't find him then. It was the mother of all ricochets, the bullet, yeah? Sure, sure, sure. Right, let's report that. Gonna go get some milk. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. That was a lot of DP. Not enough to put me over a level, though. Money, though! I need more money. Right, well, I guess that's just continuing on. Considering I supposedly can't find him again. But yes, not only that, it's, it's just the fact that if the weapons were removed, then, and the weapons themselves are evidence because of a fight, the weapons are evidence enough that more than a body that identifies the killer. Then it's got to be an incredibly identifiable weapon that he was fighting against. But maybe uh, I should say less. Maybe I should say less. I'm going to check him for Nielsen upstairs now. I just want to keep saying what <laughs> Must remember, it's the Phoenix right way, right? Don't let on to what you do know, because it's better if you play dumb for a let's play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Right, I'm going to save here, and we're going to meet with... <laughs> Lecter Arundel. Just not so super spy. <laughs> I think I did just save, by the way, but... We'll save again. Let's step through this door and see what more we can learn about our situation because if an Imperial spy is here and has managed to get in, what's going on? Supposedly, I won't be able to do anything for quite a while, so... Let's find out what goes on! What's up, guys? Working hard or hardly working? Good to see you had the decency to show up without inviting the defense force. <laughs> Don't take that as a sign that we won't drag you out of here in handcuffs. We know you had something to do with the Red Constellation's actions. There's no use pretending otherwise. Enough with the song and dance. How about you tell us what you're doing here in Crosbell? Or better yet, where the hell my uncle and the rest of the Red Constellation are? You would know. The Imperial Government is their contractor and you are the point of contact, are you not? Alright, settle down, kiddos. One question at a time. First off, I took the early train from the Empire here just this morning. Old man Gilius orders, if that wasn't obvious to you. The Blood and Iron Chancellor. For what purpose? Well, before I get into all that, there's a little nugget of info I think you guys would rather know first. The Imperial Army is planning to invade Croswell this afternoon. Shock. What? We're not falling for that. Actually, I wouldn't doubt it. The way things are heading, he just might be telling the truth for once. Are they going to go straight through Belgard Gate? Yep, 
There's an armored division ready to go at Gorelia Fortress. We heard about the movements. It's just one, sure, but I think you know how it'll go. Yep. They've got the Empire's latest tanks with all the bells and whistles. Crossbell's armored cars are going to get kicked around like tin cans. Ah. We have to report this immediately to the Guardian. I, I mean the Defense Force. No point. It's not that they don't already know. Yeah, they told us. That was yesterday, though. We said that a bit. Well, that was last week. Well, they've been... The military build-up's been a week. <laughs> of course they know. We know. We got told... Ellie, did it not ruminate in your head at all? We sent an official notice to the state government about this a while ago. A good old dealer decided to keep our assets hostage at the IBC anyway. Then he went and crowned himself Prez. It's like, how stupid can you be? They couldn't possibly stop an invasion from the Imperial Army. Or can they? That's why I'm here in Crossbell. Hey, any of you seen Dita's game here? What good is appointing Arios as Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Force going to do against those guys? I'm not sure. Arios is the strongest swordsman we know. He's still just one man. Even he couldn't match up to a tank. Could it be that they have some kind of trump card up their sleeve? Perhaps they reached some sort of compromise with the Republic to keep the Imperial Army in check. If that were the case, the President wouldn't have been so critical of them, of them in his address. He must be planning to confront Calvert as well. That's exactly right. Sis Kilika? What? Huh? Y you're... Kilika? A pleasure to see you again, SSS. And you as well, Captain Arundel. I do apologize for my tardiness. Eh, don't sweat it. We were just getting started. So how are things going on your guys' end? Smoothly, more or less. As of now, an armoured aviation division has been deployed to the outskirts of Altair. The, the Republican army is on the move too? We literally heard they were doing exercises! <laughs> armoured aviation division? You mean they're ready to attack from both the sky and the ground? Correct. It's a unit equipped with the latest high mobility tank models, as well as military airships. They are by far the most maneuverable division within the Republican army. You've got to be kidding me. That makes this a pincer attack from both major powers. Between a rock and a hard place, to say the least. It doesn't take a political pundit to understand what brought about this situation. Even so, Dieter Kreuz refused to compromise, opting instead for drastic action. What he intends by it, however, is just about anyone's guess. There's one more piece of this little puzzle we've got going. So here, I'll go ahead and answer that second question you had. Second question? You mean about where the Red Constellation is? Yeah, it's a pretty simple answer. You ready? I don't know. No one does. Not even the Imperial government has any clue. That, that can't be! Why spend so much time building up a response just to admit you never had one? So what? You're telling us that you had them tear Crosbolt inside out and just let him off the leash after? Actually, hold on just a second. We know the Red Constellation had a contract with the Imperial government at the time of the trade conference. They were hired to kill the terrorists who were targeting the Chancellor's life. Isn't that right? Bingo! I guess you must have heard it straight from the military monster's mouth. Then, this is just a hunch, but... Could it be that the Imperial government's contract with them ended the moment the terrorists were out of the picture? What? That would mean... I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Not gonna lie, Lloyd. That detective's nose of yours would be pretty useful in my line of work. If only we were a bit rougher around the edges. Th then was I right? Yeah, nail on the head. The Imperial government hasn't had any contact with the Red Constellation since the trade conference. I thought it was pretty weird they didn't pack up and leave Crossbell as soon as our contract was over. Even I was shocked they decided to paint the town red the way they did. No way. Then why would Uncle Sigmund and the others pull something like that? Could they have signed a new contract? With the society, perhaps? I find that unlikely. During the Labille incident, the society had a fleet of foot soldiers they referred to as Enhanced Jaegers. If they were to launch a full-scale attack on Crosbell, I'm certain they would have used what is already at their disposal. That makes more sense. In other words, there would be no need for them to outsource the job to another corps. That lets us narrow down the list of suspects. Given the circumstances, it would only be natural to assume that the attack was by order of the Imperial Government, which is a misconception our guilty party stands to benefit from. Moreover, they would also need the funds to enter a long-term contract with one of the highest-ranking corps on the continent. It can't be. 
Sounds like you got the picture. At times, the truth can be found in the very last place we wish to. Uh, hold on a moment. Are the two of you suggesting... There's only one suspect we know who ticks all those boxes. Wait, wait. Maybe we shouldn't be jumping to conclusions. Lecter. Killica. Thanks for telling us all of this. I know this is a difficult spot, given your positions. We'll take it from here. We should... Hello, this is Bannings from the special support section. But thank goodness it finally went through. Lloyd, it's Cecile. Cecile? You sound frantic. What's going on? It, it's Arios. He came to the SSS building just now. Arios was there? Yes, and then he... He took Kia away with him. What? I tried to stop him, but Kia, she... Actually, this will be easier to explain in person. Could you come back as soon as you can? We'll be right there, Cecile. Stay put and wait for us. What's going on? You look like you just saw a ghost. Arios went to the SSS building and took Kia away with him. The hell? Why would he do such a thing? We have to get back to the SSS building right away. Kilika, Lecter, sorry, but we've got urgent business to take care of. Of course. Be careful. Good luck, guys. I guess that little ankle biter really was the key to everything. You think they'll make it in time? Perhaps. Though I can't imagine it will prove an easy task. Cecile! Lloyd! Tell us what happened to Kia. You said she was taken by Arios. It's true. Arios came by all dressed up in his new white uniform. He said that he'd come to pick her up, and she just nodded. You're kidding. I mean, Kido went with him willingly. That's the way it seemed to me. I thought it was strange that she would leave without letting any of you know, so I tried to stop her. But Kia told me that it was fine. Zite was agitated, but Kia's words seemed to calm him down. Speaking of Zite, he doesn't seem to be around. He wandered off on his own after those two left. I assume he was trying to follow them, but I couldn't say for sure. What in the world is happening? Could it be that she had plans with Shizuku today? I thought that might have been the case, but it didn't appear to be. What Ariel said, it seemed as if they were heading to Michelin. Michelin? Yes, he mentioned having a boat prepared. Where else could their destination be if not the resort? Michelin has been on lockdown for the last few days. Why would he choose to take her there of all places? Damn, something's definitely off. We should follow them, Lloyd. Yeah, we have to secure a boat for ourselves. Sorry, Cecile, but could you look after the place a bit longer? We're gonna chase them down. Of course, be careful out there. I didn't like the look on Kia and Arios' faces. They seem so solemn. Whatever it is they're doing, it must be something gravely serious. Noted. We have to find them and get to the bottom of this. 